Hello everyone. Uh, today we have another swatching video with paints donated by a very kind subscriber. Uh, this time it's Da Vinci watercolors. Um, as you can see, we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. Okay, first up we have Nickel Tintate Yellow, which is PY53. Uh, this is not a pigment I've ever used before. Um, looks quite pale and opaque to me. I do quite like it though. Uh, next we have Hansa Yellow Light, which is PY3. Um, this is a pigment I've used quite a lot actually. Uh, it's often used in lemon yellows. I think both the Schmincke and Magello lemon yellows are made with this. Um, yeah, it's a nice and vibrant yellow, but I think it's got questionable light fastness, or so I've read, so you have to do your own tests on it. Uh, next we have Oreolin Mixture. This is made from PY40 and PY3. Now PY40 is the genuine Oreolin pigment. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not light fast, so I guess it will fade or change colour when exposed to sunlight over time. Um, I don't know if the, adding the PY3 to it somehow makes it more stable or not. I guess I'd have to do a test on that. Um, yeah, nice colour though. Uh, next we have, uh, is it Aralid Yellow, which is PY97. Um, hopefully I said that right. Yeah, it's another nice mid-yellow. I'm actually quite enjoying these Da Vinci paints so far. They they paint out really nicely. Okay, next we have Hansa Yellow Medium, PY74. It's not cadmium, as I wrote on the page. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I've never tried this pigment, but it looks okay to me. Yeah, it's another fine yellow. It's nice and vibrant. Uh, next is Cadmium Yellow Deep, which is PY35 and PO20. Uh, so this warm yellow is a mix of Cadmium Yellow and Cadmium Orange. I don't usually use warm yellows like this one in my palette. Um, but again, the paint looks fine. It's nice and vibrant again. Yeah, so far so good. Right, next is Azo Yellow or Nickel Azo Yellow, PY150. Okay, now this is a pigment I've been using quite a lot recently. Um, and this looks like a really good one, actually. It seems to have a nice, you know, a good value range. It gets quite dark, but then thins out nicely. I'll have to do a comparison video of this pigment soon, I think. And now we have cadmium orange, which is PO20. Uh, this is another pigment I never really use. It's cadmium orange. Um, yeah, oranges really aren't my thing, but again, this one looks fine, paints out very nicely. Uh, next is Vermilion Hue, which is PR188 and PO62. Okay, this one's a nice red-orange. Not really a paint I see myself using, but again, yep, lovely vibrant colour. And uh, now onto Cadmium Scarlet, which is PR108. Again, a very orange red. Oh, I really like how it flows on the wet paper. It's very nice. Okay. 
Uh, now onto cadmium red light, which is PR108. Wow, look at that. Flows really nicely. I think I preferred this to the cadmium red scarlet before it. It's not quite as orange. Uh, next is cadmium red deep PR108. Uh, this is the last of the three PR108s here. And it's exactly what it says it is. It's a deeper, less orange cadmium red. Yeah, it looks fine for me. Okay, now moving on to the cool reds. First we have Red Rose Deep, which is PV19. Looks great and it flows well on the paper. I can see that all of these cool reds have PV19 in them. I wonder how different they'll all be. Uh, next is Rose Matter Quinacridone, which is PV19 and PR188. Uh, that's what it says on the pan, but looking at the Da Vinci website, I think this one is called Rose Door Quinacridone. Again, it's a great color, but doesn't look that much different from the Red Rose Deep before it to me. And uh, next we have Carmine, PV19. I have Schmincke's Permanent Carmine, which is also PV19. And I think this, yeah, this seems like a pretty good one. It's nice and saturated. Uh, next is Alizarin Crimson, PV19. It's good to see an Alizarin Crimson hue that's not a multi-pigment mix. Um, I'll have to paint it out next to a genuine PR83 to see how it compares. Yeah, this one looks really good and disperses nicely on the paper again. Uh, now on to Cobalt Violet PV14. So as I said in the Windsor & Newton video before, I had the Rembrandt version of this pigment and I really didn't like it at first. It was, you know, it had a horrible gummy check texture and just wasn't nice to use. But I, I did learn to like it eventually after I let it dry in a pan. I mean, this, this version seems, yeah, seems very good to me. Uh, it's easy to re-wet and has some nice granulation going on. Right, next up is Mauve, PV19 and PB29. Now, this is a very strong and vibrant purple, at least when it's wet. Um, another nice paint, but it's not really a colour I think I would use. Okay, now moving on to the blues with Manganese Blue Mixture, which is made from PB33 and PB15. PB33 is the genuine manganese blue pigment. Um, I actually thought they'd stop making it a few years back, but I guess Da Vinci still use it. Yeah, nice paint with some good granulation. Um, I think I prefer it to a PB35 cerulean. Uh, next up is cerulean blue genuine PB36. So PB36 is definitely my preferred pigment for a cerulean blue. Um, to me, PB35 just doesn't look very nice. Um, this paint is lovely though. Yeah, it's highly pigmented and yeah, some really nice granulation too. Uh, next is the cerulean blue hue, which is PB15 and PW6. Um, I've seen much worse cerulean blue hues than this one. Um, this one looks okay, actually, I think. 
I still prefer a PB36 though. Uh, next is Cobalt Blue PB28. So Cobalt Blue is one of my favourite paints. I especially love to use it in skies. But I tend to like Cobalt Blues that don't granulate too much. So this one is pretty excellent in my opinion. Uh, next we have Ultramarine Blue, PB29. Okay, this is just as I would expect it to be really. Yeah, it's very nice and vibrant and a good amount of granulation going on. Uh, now we have Thalo Blue, PB15. Okay, this looks like a uh, green shade to me. Yeah, that one looks fine. Uh, next is Prussian Blue, PB27. So this is not a blue I ever really use these days, uh, but this one seems perfectly fine. I just tend to gravitate towards Thalo Blues. Uh, next is Thalo Turquoise PB16. So this is another pigment I don't really use in my palette. Um, it is a very nice colour though. I think this PB16 looks a little bit bluer than the Windsor & Newton version in the last video. Um, it might just be the bad lighting though. I'll have to check when I photograph it in daylight. Uh, next is Cobalt Turquoise. Uh, this is PB36. I'm not quite sure why I didn't write that on the paper. I really don't like this colour very much. It looks kind of a little dull and lifeless to me. Um, might look better when dry though. Okay, moving on, now we have Viridian Green, which is PG18. Um, I don't think I've ever used this real Viridian pigment before. And I've always heard that it's quite a weak pigment and really difficult to re-wet once it's dry in a pan. Yeah, but I, I had no problems re-wetting it at all here. I don't know what Da Vinci do to it, but whatever it is, it's great. Yeah, it's a very nice granulating green, really good. Uh, next we have Sap Green, which is PG7 and PY42. Yeah, this green looks really good to me. Um, yeah, it looks much more natural than Sap Greens from other brands. I guess that's because they're using the PY42 for the yellow. Yeah, I think this mix could actually be, you know, quite a, a useful convenience mix on my palette. Uh, next we have Raw Sienna, PBR7. Yeah, it looks quite orange to me, this one. Um, I, I always used to like my Raw Sienna to be a PBR7, but these days I'm starting to like ones made with PY42 and PY43. I can't really see any granulation in this one either. Uh, next is Burnt Sienna, PBR7. Mm, this one looks really nice to me. I do still prefer my Burnt Sienna to be a PBR7, but I'm actually starting to like some of the PR101 based ones as well. Uh, now we have Raw Umber, which is another PBR7 paint. Wow, this one looks really dark, really brown to me. 
Um, I know that quite a few brands um, have raw umbers that look like this, but I much prefer the more yellow versions that you get from like Holbein and Windsor Newton, and you used to get from Rembrandt as well. Uh, next we have Burnt Umber. So this is another PBR7. Yeah, this one looks great. Um, yeah, it's a good quality Burnt Umber and has a little bit of granulation going on too. Yeah, this one looks good. Uh, next is sepia, PBK6 and PBR7. Uh, I have the Magello, uh, Schmincke and Cotman versions of sepia. I don't use any of them actually. Oh no, that's not quite true. I sometimes use the Cotman for value studies. Yeah, it's not really a colour I'd put in my palette. Okay, and finally we have Payne's Grey, which is PBK6 and PB27. So it's a mix of Lamp Black and Prussian Blue. Um, as I always say when swatching out any Payne's Greys, I tend to prefer them to be a bit on the blue side. Uh, this one isn't really blue at all, so it doesn't appeal to me all that much. Okay, so there we have it. That's... 35 colors swatched out, something like that. And here they are in daylight when completely dry. So, what do you think about them? Um, I'd say I'm actually quite impressed, to be honest. Uh, I've heard lots of good things about Da Vinci in the past, but as they're, well, I guess they're unavailable here in Thailand, I've never actually got to try them. Uh, one thing I have heard said about them many, many times is how great value their 37 milliliter tubes are. And um, looking at the DaVinci website at the moment, the 37 mil tubes seem to be available for between, I think it's $17.65 and $24 US dollars. Uh, that does seem pretty cheap for a tube that size. It does say that they're, that it's a sale price though. Um, I don't know if they ever go up to full price. Uh, I hope, I'm sure there's someone who buys them often who can let us know about that. Yeah, I definitely, you know, I think these paints are really, really good quality. Um, in my opinion, they might sit a bit below the top brands, you know, like Windsor Newton, M. Graham, Schmincke and Daniel Smith. But I definitely say they're at least on a par with my Rembrandt and Magello. Um, yeah, they could even be slightly better, I guess, um, especially for people who like their paints to be a bit more active, wet and wet. Yeah, definitely a good, good quality paint, I think. Thank you all very much for watching and an extra special thank you to the kind subscriber who sent me these paints to try. I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.